Join the Smite Twitchy League for a competitive league action without any toxicity. All you have to do is be a subscriber on Twitch and join our Discord using the description down below. Be able to track your own progress throughout the game. Be able to track what gods are winning, what gods are being played. All the data you could ever want to help improve your own gameplay in a safe, toxic-free environment. Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Bastet Guide. Oh, so you might be thinking horrible. to yourself, all right, Incon, I get why you did a Cleo and a Cherry Guide, but I'm pretty sure we already had a Bastet Guide this year, so what's what? up? Well, Bastet has recently gotten a partial uh, rework, is what it is called, because not all of her abilities are different, uh, but some of them are different, and so I wanted to talk about the new Bastet kit, uh, talk about how her build has changed, all that kind of stuff, so you can better understand her kit, uh, because she will most certainly be in your games of Smite, because she is quite good right now. So Bastet was already a ability forward assassin in the jungle, uh, which meant that all of the items that are meta right now uh, she already liked, so items like the Jotun's Wrath, she was already a big fan of. So this buff kind of just brought her right smack dab into the meta now that she has an incredible passive and an incredible ultimate. So we're going to be starting off with our two, of course, this is our main ability on Basta and the one that we will be leveling up first. It does munches and bunches of damage, and it's actually a slightly faster ability now. Uh, so this ability is gonna fire out a little bit faster, it's gonna trigger a little bit faster, so you are gonna get that bleed damage in a more appropriate amount of time than previous with Bash Set. Uh, so there's not quite as much waiting in terms of that second ability. It was already the ability that you leveled up first. Uh, and it is continuing to be that way. It is just slightly better. Uh, for the most part, your one, two, and three have basically all remained the same. Your pound is still your pound. You can jump forward, jump back. Your bleed is still your bleed. It's just a little bit faster, a little bit easier to use. Your three is still sending out the kitty cat that go ahead and roots. The two major changes to her kit were in the form of her passive and her ultimate in both are a big deal now most of the time you think a passive how big of a deal could a passive be but bastet uh, arguably has one of the best passives in the game now uh so what that passive is going to be is it's basically like having a built-in soul eater so you're going to get five percent physical lifesteal and physical ability lifesteal which is the crucial part about this when hitting enemies additionally the enemy gods hit or reveal the bastet for six seconds so it does reveal them but more importantly it gives us lifesteal the lifesteal is five percent baseline on the regular lifesteal and on the ability based you get one percent bonus per level against gods and a 0.5 percent bonus against minions so this means at level 20 this is a 25 percent heal ability and physical life seal against gods and it means that it is about a 15 percent on to minions so really really strong passive a lot of sustain to help keep you in the jungle help keep farming help keep you alive in team fights etc and then her ultimate uh, for those of you that played smite way way back in the day you will be familiar with this they have given bass that old arachne ult so it is a very long distance ability it has a pretty solid wind up time and when you hit the target it is going to do burst damage and it is going to pick them up as if it were a fender and it is going to bring them back to you. Right there, you can see the Hachi went ahead and beads it, just like how you can beads a Fenrir ulti, you can bead the Bastet ulti, but it will still do the damage in that case. 
This ability is very, very long range. It has a pretty thick delay timer on it. It has a large pre-fire cast time. So think like a Nox ulti or a Janus ult where you have that really long buildup before you use it. Same concept with Basta. It does not fire immediately. You will have to go ahead and do a channel. During that channel though, you are CC immune. So you can also utilize Basta ultimate for the CC immunity that it gives. This ability is very, very long, and we're talking like lane distance long. And it can go through walls. This ability absolutely goes through walls, and that makes it a total killer. You're going to be utilizing this as your main ganking tool to pick off mid laners and the such. Hello, Jarm, baby. I heard you with his stealth. So for your level order on Bash Set, you're going to level up your ultimate with whatever you can. Then you're going to get your two. And then you actually do have an option between your one and your three. I've always been a fan of leveling Bash Set four, two, three, one. Just because having your leap as another damaging ability incentivizes you to use it. Um, in a purely aggressive fashion. Of course, I got hit by Yannis Assault. When, if you don't use it in a purely aggressive fashion, you can use it a lot like a chalk one too, where you can go one way and then juke back the other way. So it gives you a lot of utility in that manner, but it's absolutely viable to level best at four, two, one, three. Uh, pretty much equally viable with four, two, three, one. So it's just gonna come a little bit down to preference. Are you comfortable using your leap more aggressively or do you want to use it a little bit more defensively, play a little bit safer? Either way, different strokes for different folks. Both are really good abilities though and you're going to level them up anyway. Just make sure you do the four and the two first. Gank left lane. God, my Ramba's barely gonna live through that. I didn't really want to use my ult because I wanted to keep it up so I can go gank mid lane right after this. Freedom! So your standard combo on Bastet right now, another thing you should know about her ultimate is that her ultimate brings the target to where you were when you fired the ultimate, not where you are when the ultimate ends. So if you move between those times, Wow, that's a lot of damage. Got a skidoo to my boodle right on out of there. If you move between those times, the kitty cat does not drag uh, the god directly to you. It gets dragged to the location of where you casted it from. So you have to basically wait for the cat to bring it to you. You can't like ulti them in the middle of the lane and then try to run back into your tower range. So the cat brings it back into the tower range kind of thing. They'll just go right to the middle of the lane and the kitty cat will drop it off. So for your standard combo on Bastet nowadays, you're typically on a gank going to be starting off with your ultimate. So you're going to be trying to position yourself uh, on a sentry ward if you have one, so that way you know that they can't see you. And you're going to try to ulti somebody through the wall. This ability is particularly good against gods that do not have um, CC immune ultimate or do not have leaps because you can pull them right through the wall and then they're stuck with you. Uh, a god like Janus is actually really good against Basta because not only does he have a CC immune ultimate, he can also portal right through the wall and try to help get himself back into position. So you're gonna notice my second item right now. This is actually an item that we got in the Cleo guide as well, which is funny because it's not an item that you buy very often right now, but Cleo and Basta happen to both be really good users of Soul Leader. So get that Soul Leader second on Basta. Uh, you're gonna absolutely love it. She basically has a Soul Leader built in with her passive, and that is going to stack with this Soul Leader effect as well. Um, 
just extreme. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna have to go in on this wheel, which is apparently no escaping my fate right here, because everywhere I turn, there's somebody else. Let's at least make sure we get a kill. But the Soul Eater lifesteal, combined with your passive, combined with eventually getting the Boomba's spear online, you're gonna 100% heal off of a red buff camp or something. You go up and you use your razor whip on a camp and you kill it, you're gonna 400% heal. Uh, when the, with, in the late stages of the game is an extremely useful way to keep yourself into a fight. You just go quickly to a camp and come right on back and you don't actually have to back to the fountain. So I highly recommend getting that soul leader online that second slot. Also, soul leader just generically fits really nice into jungle builds right now it's not like i said the best item on all junglers it's kind of a couple specific junglers that utilize it really well like bassett and cleo but as far as just being a general item goes it also gives you decent amounts of power but it gives you that uh penetration and cooldown which really slots right on in. You go right from here into the serrated edge. You're going to have 30% pen with serrated edge plus this. You finish up with a 40% pen with that nice little... Oh, we're going to grab this Awelix. You see he's going to get brought right back to the original location and not where I was standing at that current time. The original location. Just gonna jump myself right on away from this and go right back to farming. So we never really got into it because we got ganked and distracted, but your standard combo, you're just gonna go ahead and bring the target right to you with the ultimate. Then you're gonna follow up, hit them immediately with that tail whip. That way, even if they use a getaway skill, they're still gonna bleed and take like 40% of their HP. Then if they're still next to you, you can follow up with your kitty cat. So they're rooted. You've got a little bit more time with them to try to finish the kill. Keep your leap up in case you need to chase them. In case you get counter ganked and collapsed on. In case they use a leap over a wall to get away and you need to be able to chase them. Go ahead and keep your leap up. Don't use it for that burst damage right then. Follow up after your ultimate with the two and then the three. And that way you have the one for the potential chase. Your right tower. This has also been really convenient for Bastet because she no longer has to initiate with her one in order to get in the range of targets because you can instead just go ahead and use your ultimate, which means you can keep up your leap for that chasing in more situations, which means it's much harder now to escape a Bastet gank. It's nearly impossible, actually, depending on your positioning in the lane as long as Bastet hits her abilities. Your right tower is under attack. Now, for those of you that have played with or against Bastet as well, right you'll have noticed that the ultimate on Bastet is really quiet. It's really quiet, and it basically doesn't have a... It basically has very little animation, so it can be difficult to see coming your way. I haven't really found a way around that yet other than you really got to keep your eyes peeled when you're playing against Bastet because that ultimate is going to be coming your way and it's really hard to hear and it's really hard to see. Uh, a good nerf to this ability, honestly, would be making it easier to see and louder. Um, so that way you have at least a little bit of an idea that it is coming your way. Although you can bead it after you've been picked up by the cat. Works just like a Fenrir ult, where when Fenrir picks you up, you can still bead after you've been grabbed. You will take the damage because you're not damage immune or anything, but you won't uh, get dragged all the way back to the location that Bastet was at. Now I'm gonna take myself right into a serrated edge. So that way we immediately have 30% cooldown in this build and a 30% pen at the 13 minute marker. Not to mention all of the life steal that we have. I've got about 20% physical life steal on gods, not including the soul eater serrated edge life steal. So, you know, you know, we're gonna be full healing off abilities. Uh, we got a ton of cooldown to slam our ultimate. Our ultimate with 30% cooldown is already a 56 second cooldown. It is a really, really short one. Gonna go ahead and pick up the Yanis. Get rid of him right there. Use my jump. 
once. I'm gonna go use it again to get back. A Wheelix tries to ulti me, but she was actually looking the wrong way right there, so I don't get hit by it. Just trying to keep a little bit of distance between me and the Bastet, because he wants to go for the Feather Step so bad. Now I can chase him, and he should go ahead and bleed out from that, and I can jump right on back. So you can see I'm using a lot of my uh, distance as well to kind of kite around people. And then committing to the kill once I'm confident that I can actually go for it. Now, one side effect of taking away the multiple kitty cats from Bastet is that she is much worse at soloing objectives. Um, the triple kitty cats used to be able to tank the gold fury of the pyromancer for you until the end of time. Uh, but they can no longer do that because you only have one singular kitty cat. So the option to uh, just let your kitty cats tank while you just kind of free beat on the Gold Fury, those days are over. So the days of Bastet kind of soloing the objective aren't really around anymore. So that is the one kind of nerf that came from this change. Uh, but believe me, I promise you, it was worth it. You have slain an enemy. Her ultimate's really good. And by really good, I mean it's one of the best abilities in the game. So, for the rest of your Bastet build, it's going to get a little bit... Um, I will be it's going to get a little bit point. awkward because you're going to see we're going to be overcapping on cooldown here. But it's going to be fine because we're going to sell the Jotun's Wrath in the late game. We're going to go ahead and start working ourselves into an Erendite. Just give us a little bit of that movement speed. They get pulled to you. You get faster. Just another way to make sure that the target is never going to be able to get away. This is also a great time you can start picking up defensive items here in the jungle. Magi's and Mantle of the Discord. Both are actually really good items on Bastet. Help make sure you get that jump back on your leap. Bastet is most susceptible after she's used her first leap before she's leaped back because if you get CC'd during that, something like a cripple, all of a sudden you don't get the jump back off and then you're very, very out of position and liable to die. But you can just see the numbers on my health bar healing up like crazy from one singular razor whip. And of course, I'm going to get hit by Janusult because why wouldn't I? Luckily, I'm Bastet. I will full heal off of a camp, but I don't even have my Boomba Spear online yet. Now, Jorm, obviously, we can't pull. So I can't do anything about that. I can try to keep a little bit of distance between me and him, though. And I've got a lot of healing capability. He's going to jump right on over his uh, knockup as well as his two. And now I'm going to give him the chase right on down the lane, just utilizing my jumps in order to avoid some of his abilities. Had to shut my mouth so I could go ahead and listen to the audio effects coming out from the Jorm. And I will be able to go ahead and wrap up that kill. Gonna use a, my razor whip to get a nice thick heal off of that as well. Gotta be careful here because I am out of mana. So I'm gonna go ahead and beads and jump. Unfortunately, she actually hit me with her three right as I used my beads. But we're still gonna escape out of there, which is fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and back it up and work on that Erendite, which is going to bring it up to 40% CDR. Of course, once we finish that Boomba's Spear, we will be overcapped, but you, you really don't got to worry about the overcapping right now of cooldown and pen in the jungle. It's going to happen at least uh, partially until you get your full build online. Especially with like a red pot or a 3k pot or something. So as far as the guys you don't want to go against on Bastet, none of this type of stuff has changed. Bastet's biggest problem is cripples. Um, not being able to use your leap is obviously a big issue, but she's become much better against a lot of the gods that she used to struggle against in the past. Uh, like Ares is a notable example. Ares used to just wreck Bastet to no end because he would chain you, you'd be crippled, you couldn't use your jump, you'd be stuck that there, and then he would ulti you and you had the beads, even have your beads up, you get yoinked and These you die. Nowadays, you have down. your ultimate that you can utilize for CC immunity in order to get you out of some of those hairy situations. So the built-in CC immunity has been an absolute godsend for Bastet to increase her survivability. But in general, 
cripples are still the bane of your existence. You don't want to be going against them, but you do have a much better time of it now. If I get hit by one more Yana Salty, so help me bastard. Also, apparently Jana Salty is if you're in con. It's not a particular Bastet weakness. It's just a me weakness on any god I've ever played. It's a little bit separate. You will probably not encounter this issue unless your name is Barracuda. I hear he also has a tracker in his pocket. Pon Pon thinks it's funny. It's not that funny. After we finish the Boomba Spear, we're going to be grabbing ourselves a Heart Seeker. Heart Seeker is one of the best items on Bastet. We've got a ton of power, which means we're going to basically be getting the full um, utilization out of this item. A lot of the targets that we're going to be going against are going to have a bunch of HP. Uh, so somebody like a Jorm, the Heart Seeker is going to work really well against, assuming he gets a little bit more HP going online. He's actually going pretty aggressive right now in terms of the build, which means that we're going to kill him anyway. So the Heart Seeker is going to be more helpful for against somebody like the Sylvanas this game. It's actually good to know. It's actually good to know on that, though. As far as God pairing with you, Bastet can cover a lot of distance very quickly, uh, particularly if you got Blink. I got Beads and Aegis this game because I feel like I'm doing so much damage, I'm providing so much value that as long as I can stay alive in a team fight, I can full heal with my Soul Leader passive. As long as I can stay alive, I can come back into the team fight and one shot somebody. So I didn't feel the need to go a more aggressive active like a Blink. And so I grabbed the Aegis to hopefully help me live through some of these, you know, Yana's all these combos and stuff. But, you know, I'd have to actually Aegis and see it coming. You know me, I love to let it go right through my forehead. Uh, you still can get a Hydra on Basta if you so desire. Uh, getting Hydras and Soul Leader gets a little bit tricky. Um... It's fine, you just wouldn't end up getting the Arendite in this situation uh, in terms of your CDR, which is totally fine. Um, Cleo's actually a god that tends to utilize both of those items together, the Soul Leader and the Hydras. She's really kind of the only one. Um, but you can get the Hydras on Bastet. I don't tend to do a lot of auto attacks in the late game as Bastet. I tend to do a little bit more kiting around, staying outside of people's melee range. Uh, which is why I don't personally go the Hydras on her. But if you find that you are going in and doing the auto attack canceling on her, uh, it'll objectively help with objectives and stuff. Uh, and it might be good for your particular play style. It is a good item on her. Uh, you just wouldn't end up getting like the air and die here in this situation, which I just slightly prefer. I will be the one but viable to though. As it turns out in Smite, when you're playing a really strong role with a lot of good items like jungle, you've got a lot of good items on the table, you know? Typically, the worse a role is, the more streamlined your build has to be because you don't have a lot of good options, and so you have to go like the one build. But in a really strong role like jungle right now on an ability-based assassin, you've got so many options, you know what I'm saying? you got so many. This is good, and this is good, and all this is good. I'm also going to make sure uh, that I grab a Magi this game. They do have the Awelix. Uh, Awelix is an obvious counter to Bastet. Awelix is just a general counter to all things Leapy Boy and Leapy Girl. Um, this particular game I got pretty big pretty early, so it hasn't been that much of an issue. But in general, uh, you should be concerned. That is an unfortunate grab of the Sylvanas, but I'm going to go ahead and just utilize this as yoinking him in the opposite direction away from the fight and then try to bring the fight away from them am i getting jorm ulti right now i sure am trying to heal off of some camps right now while i'm playing the run away from jorm game not the easiest game i've ever played he is still there in stealth. I'm gonna have to go jump this way. Still just, you know, trying to heal. I'm gonna keep running this way. They all went back to the way that I would have jumped back. So I'm gonna continue to run back through their jungle this way. 
try to avoid a whole lot of them right now, but they have committed to grabbing this mass tech kill, apparently. With all five of them using every single ability that they possibly could. I didn't mean to offend, I'm sorry. But now we can work on our Magi's. Magi's gonna be really good against Janus here. He tries to portal me. No problemo, I've got the Magi. Sylvanas though, a Wheelix tries to ulti me. Bada bing, bada boom, you ain't pulling nobody, baby. I got the Magi. So it's gonna be a very effective item for me here. Um, even selling the Jotun's Wrath for a Mantle of Discord at the end of the game, if I feel like I didn't need that power, could also be a good option. Now here in the late stages of the game, Bastet basically plays out exactly like she used to. Your job is to focus the squishy targets. Whoever is doing the best as a squishy target for this particular match, it's looking like it's probably gonna be the Janus and the Rama have the most damage coming out. So I'm gonna be trying to get onto them in the back line, try to grab them, bring them out of position with my ultimate, force their beads with it, and then continue to initiate on them when they're not super paying attention. These tracking beetles have never let me down. Really anybody? But Sylvanas is a pretty good target for me right now. I stand undefeated. You can see though, a Wheelix isn't as strong of a counter as she used to be to the Bastet. Now that you've got that built-in CC immunity, the game has changed a little. Not nearly the counter that she used to be. Still good. Still can do a lot of damage to you. But not nearly the counter that she has been in the past. Gonna take just a quick moment to go do myself a little back kim. Gonna heal off a ton off of that back kim. We're gonna win ourselves this fight and we should be able to go ahead. Grab ourselves that fire giant. Uh, Bastet has gone up by far in her tears. Uh, from this patch, I would say that she was a underrated jungle before this. That was actually a, almost a Rama snipe steal. That was actually a really good attempt. I would say that she was an underrated uh, jungler before the patch, uh, but now that this change has gone through, I don't think there's any arguing with the fact that Bastet uh, immediately brought herself into that top three uh, conversation in terms of junglers. She's being banned a ton, a ton in the Smite Twitchy League. Nobody wants to deal with her. Her damage output is insane. Mid laners' lives were already hard enough, uh, and she certainly does not make it any easier. Try to get some burst damage on that Joram as fast as humanly possible. Looks like Yanis was yeeting an ulti right my way. Dwarf is gonna come right on out of the ulti and I'm just gonna hit him with a couple abilities. He should die right away from that. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the ulti on the Yanis. Not gonna get it, so I'm gonna jump back myself to safety. But we should be able to grab a quick Wheelix kill. Ooh, not quite gonna be able to get in range of that. Gotta watch out for that. Rama cripple on his auto attack. I know that his uh, rollout is down right now, so he's also got to be a little bit careful. Unfortunately, I'm out of mana to use any more abilities or we would have been able to kill him. Now, part of this lack of mana is just the fact that we've been fighting for 89 years. But it's also the fact that I did not go uh, for a transcendent this match. You can absolutely get a transcendent. Yoink. Uh, on Bassett, nothing wrong with the Transcendence. But I find that it does take a little bit long to stack. Um, if you're gonna go the Hydras or the Arendite, you're probably not gonna get the Transcendence. If you're gonna avoid both of those, you could go a third item where you could get your Jotuns and your Soul Eater and then grab that third item, Transcendence. Um, Transcendence and Soul Eater end up being kind of hard to build together because then you end up having to double stack. 
uh, and the jungler, the jungle is not the best role for doing that. Soul Leader has always been a super, super easy to stack item, so it's not a big deal. Um, but Transcendence is more of a standard stacking item, so you have to be a little bit careful around that. Now we should probably go do the Gold Fury, shove up left light, and grab that tier 2 tower. All that good stuff. All of that good stuff. So you can see my entire job at this stage of the game is to just go ahead and be a menace to particularly the Janus and the Rama, but even the Awelix right there. She beads this on the ulti. It doesn't matter. Already brought her back a little bit. Brings her out of position. We get a quick, easy kill on that one. We've still got 30 seconds on our fire giant here. I will actually do a ton of Phoenix damage with this build, so I'm gonna get in here, make sure I'm kind of attacking this Phoenix. I might die for this, but that's honestly fine. I'm gonna go backwards towards the Yanus. Gonna throw down my ulti, which should grab the kill on him. I'm healing out of my brains with the Soul Leader serrated Bastet passive combo. And now we should be able to go ahead and put this game away, grabbing ourselves a W on Bastet. So this is how you can basically expect your Bastet games to go. She is actually this strong. As long as you give her a nice, big power, cooldown, life healing build. If you're playing against Bastet, please, 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 please buy anti-heal. You need to start treating Bastet as if she were a god like a Kamazot, who you consciously think in your brain, oh, this god has a lot of healing. I should build some form of anti-heal against them. So you, it's, it's weird to think about Bastet like that, but you do need to start prioritizing the brawlers, the divines, pestilences, all that kind of stuff against her because she has more sustain, more sustain in the jungle than literally any other assassin at this point, guys. So that is your Bastet jungle guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.